Welcome back to Dishonored, the Brigmore Witches. We've arrived at the Brigmore Estate, Manor, whatever it's called. Let's explore. So we've got a couple favors. The cash, which I think is from a butler, is a favor. Or maybe the shoreline thing was from the butler. Anyway, there should be loot at those two places. And then the third one, which isn't marked is that there should be a witch with a red coat that has information for us. Ah. That should be enough. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh. uh. Oh, you gotta break it. Unless it's gonna come back again. Okay. So, I guess I should watch out for rings of these strange flowers. skull to be sure. Wish you told me that about 30 seconds ago. Okay, I'm getting too far away from the shore. One of those mud lark something things. Oh no! Not what I meant to press. I do question the point of collecting money when I think this is the last mission. <laughs> Butler's note. They're on to me. The urn will have to stay here, Reggie, until we can return by boat and claim it. The master's key, however, will go with me, and since you are nowhere to be seen, I have little choice but to scale the rocks by the waterfall and make my escape cross country. Leave me out to dry on this one and I'll put a bullet hole in your skull. Check the waterfall to see if the butler actually escaped. Slash. You deal greater damage with your sword, but you swing your sword slower. I don't feel any particular way about that. I did just realize I have two more spots for bone charms now, though. I remember there were a couple that I wanted. Sometimes when using a power, no mana will be spent. I mean, that's good. Take less damage from falls. That's good. 
Yeah, I don't need to think about it too hard. That's fine. Lookout orders. S. Dowd has left Draper's ward on Lizzie Stride's boat and could arrive within hours. Disable the grave switch. Isabel will lock the manor and wait for further instructions in the backyard. They've repaired. <clears throat> Disable the grave switch. Oh! Help on your assignment. Here, brother. I've sent you one of the strictures to guide you on your assignment to Brigamore. My hope is that heeding the warnings of the sixth stricture will be the utmost of your troubles while dealing with those heretics. Yours, Bertram. What was the clue that we got? A witch named Isabel seems to have the estate key. She's in the backyard. Okay. wanted after bend time oh yeah i think vitality is like okay it's pretty much it i guess it's not even that important it's just health regeneration is improved i don't think it really matters what i do with my powers at this point i don't think the dlc is really long enough for that to be a big issue at this point <laughs> that wasn't smart. Oh, the hole in the fence is over there. Maybe I shouldn't be entering from here. I did pay to have that hole in the fence put there, after all. Oh, they saw me. me. 
Oh no. Of all times, I chose that time to stop time? Stranger is among us. So clever. I thought two had noticed me. I was just the one. That one up there's still alive. I don't know why it's not shooting at me. Please don't drown. They're sleeping softly. That's weird. I guess it's armored to the point where it needs to open up for me to be able to hurt it, but why isn't it opening up? Ah, okay. for the next level of vitality. I think the greenhouse might be a good way to get to the back yard. <laughs> I do want to speak to that Delilah statue, but oh, it's just covered with enemies around. Does time stop when I talk with somebody? Let's just stop time. Ignore the statue. Hmm. <laughs> Rhyme of the Rosewater Hag. Excerpt from an almanac on folktales and superstitions of Gristle. 
So far in this almanac, we have cataloged many trite and ignorant, if somewhat harmless, tales. But we must now turn to that special class of folk customs that can only be called wicked and pernicious. The worst of these is perhaps the rhyme of the Rosewater Hag. Variants of this accursed poem seem to predate even the founding of Dunwall, though its ultimate origins are lost to us. As to its meaning, some consider it a tale of revenge by a mother against her own daughters. Others see it as a supplication meant to solicit the attention of some ancient spirit from the void. In any case, the ritual surrounding the poem is profusely morbid, and in many regions is used as a primitive means of settling the matter between two parties where one has accused the other of falsehood. It is performed as follows. First, whoever is to be tested must find a fountain of standing water and cover the surface with fallen rose petals. Once there are sufficient petals as to completely obscure the water, you must close your eyes firmly and place both hands within the fountain so that they are submerged beneath the blanket of rose petals. Then you are to recite the following verses. Petals, petals on the water, tell me, tell me, where's your daughter? Has she drowned beneath the mark? Has she vanished in the dark? Petals, petals on the water, tell me, tell me, where's your daughter? Has she trysted by the well? Has she secrets left to tell? Petals, petals on the water, tell me, tell me, am I your daughter? After this, you must lean into the fountain, lowering your head fully into the water and under the rose petals. Face first with both eyes still squeezed tight. Count to three and then open your eyes. At that moment, it is said that the rosewater hag will arrive. If you are without fault, you will see nothing, except that you will feel her gentle caress on the back of your neck. But if there is falsehood or wickedness in your heart, you will see the horrible face of the rosewater hag, a creature of indescribable horror. The hag will drown you in the fountain with a, a cord made of thorny vines. Obviously, while the Abbey takes things very seriously, most authorities classify this tale as superstitious nonsense. However, it must be noted that every year there are at least a half a dozen reports from the countryside of young women found dead and blue-faced with their necks nicked and scratched as if by a collar of thorns. Is that a ritual we're gonna have to do? Here's the standing water. We don't have any petals yet. <laughs> I'm really not going to go for that statue. I do have 15 sleep darts for a reason. I see. Through the statue? Is that how they see me? Oh, did I accidentally stab you? Sorry. Nice. 
Ah, the waterfall's over there. Was that the scary move that was supposed to summon? Whoa! Oh. Summon the two dogs? It didn't. But they summoned some witches. So the statues are basically security cameras, huh? Oh, I can go up here. Page from an old book, written in a scrawling hand. Dreary waters, hissing daughters, crack three green shells and steal their pearls. Turn the spigot and drink from the misery of a broken house. Gulp and swallow, follow, follow. Three wet marbles down the gullet. Do this for me, dearie, and I'll give you a birthday gift. Granny. Okay, green shells. They're talking about the pearls, I think, from the river things. I really don't feel much need to do that though, because I'm pretty sure it's just gonna get me a rune or something like that, and like, I don't think that really matters at this point. I'm sure this is the last mission. Petals and Thorns. Excerpts. An excerpt from a children's book. In the verdant garden, kneeling quietly, Rosalind and her basket attended a gathering of crown roses. Rosalind bent, caressing one of the roses and she brought the shears from behind her back, where they were hidden as if they might spook the flowers. It was but a small thing to take a life for her mother. As she brought the shears around, she pulled at a stem, readying it for the blades. But the flower did not comply, and rewarded her trust with a thorn buried in her thumb. A single drop of crimson welled up from the wound before Rosalind could bring her thumb to her lips. A hand closed around her wrist, her mother was standing nearby, witness to all that had transpired. The rose demands its price, my love. Do not deny the flower its toll. Rosalind winced as her mother forced her hand out over the flower bed and gently squeezed her thumb. Three drops spattered onto the dry, dry soil. As her mother walked away, Rosalind blinked away tears and gripped tight her shears. She left the garden with her basket brimming three crimson drops and one crimson flower. All that remained of the once proud garden. The Art of the Enchanting Garden, excerpt from a book on landscaping. Effective garden design must entice the casual observer by drawing them through the garden gates with a promise of the idyllic. Yet once inside, it must continue to captivate the senses, compelling visitors to linger among lush greenery and well-positioned decor. The tranquility of a solitary pool, the perfume of jasmine flowers, the drape of an ancient woody clematis across the estates of Dunwall, all these must serve to soothe and beguile those who would venture into the well-tended garden of our gentry. Whether one chooses manicured symmetry or the illusion of wild growth, Certain fundamentals must always apply. Variations of shape and size to excite the vision, cohesive themes to calm the spirit, and complementary scents and colors. As noted in the high-walled gardens of Lord and Lady Morgan Pluff, <laughs> Pluff? <laughs> place marble sculptures throughout as a means of transporting the visitor to a world of imagination. In keeping with the influential vision set forth by the, by the beloved Borrigan sisters, daughters of the late Jonathan and Olivia Sutter, coo to those visiting your manor garden with coordinated sounds, 
the soft splash of the fountain, the trickling of the stone-walled stream, and the rustle of Sir Conan sheath oaks from high above. Remember, a magical meeting place can be as simple as periwinkle-draped bower over a crunching gravel pathway, or a pedestal bench nestled under the boughs of a crown willow. The Sixth Stricture Excerpt from a work detailing one of the seven strictures. Restrict the wanton flesh. Truly, there is no quicker means by which a life can be upheaved and sifted than by the depredations of uncontrolled desire. What avail is the concourse of a prostitute? The attention of a loose companion? Nothing. And what of the fruit of such unions? Only sorrow is born. Only misery is multiplied. Within these things, the outsider dwells. Okay, so if you do sex work, the outsider will come and steal your soul. Gotcha. Whoa, why is there a witch up here now? I guess it doesn't matter. Oh crap, I didn't realize there was somebody watching up there. Strong arms, choking is faster. Ooh, that's really good. Hmm, what do I want to get rid of? Again, nothing. <laughs> I don't want to get rid of anything. Sometimes when using a power, no mana will be spent. I mean, I haven't run out of mana yet, so... And I have five more mana potions. Oh my god, choking is so much faster. That was like double speed. Sleep dart, nice. Oh, and I can recover a lot of the bolts that I shot at the skulls. Okay, so I can't I can't interact with the statues at all. They're just an enemy. Although I'm curious. So sound doesn't matter to them. I think it's just vision. That's it. to you turned into raw meat front door key that means we're gonna have to go back around to the front door <laughs> can I go through the back door Like 
Ooh. Oh. Are they going to come running? No, so maybe it doesn't matter if they see me a second time. That is so cool. This is so cool. Oh no, that's not cool. Well, we got the three river crust pearls. What are we supposed to do next for the quest? Swallow the pearls with water from the Brigmore Well. Have we seen the Brigmore Well? Was it in the front yard? Or perhaps in the shed? Love that fast joke. Oh! They're the one that was gonna give me information. The one with the red coat. Why did they attack me? Shit. Well. That was a wasted coin. That coat's pretty cool looking though. Does this get us water from the well? Ah, it does. Thank you for the rune. I probably will do nothing with it. What was the heavy lever for? Was that... Repair the grave switch. What would that allow me to do? I don't know, it doesn't say. Get in or something. Tragic. So mawkish, more like. 
Why do you obsess about that butler and his tramp? He drowned thinking of his love. He was a thief. He drowned thinking of what Lord Brigmore would do if he was caught. I like to imagine he was more devoted than that. He's still there, you know, rotting in the water. Why don't you go and give him a kiss? There's not much left of his face, but you can always imagine there's more. Why do you ruin everything? Wait. Now there's, there's no time to try to choke him out, I think, even with the fast choke. Well, actually, I could do one and then choke the other. Shoot one, choke the other. The choking is so fast, that's not the problem. The problem is waiting for the animation to finish afterwards. Zephyr. Overall movement speed is increased, but damage taken is increased. Oh. I think I'll take that. Mm, you move slightly faster while carrying corpses. Well, I'd rather have a overall movement speed increase than a slight increase when I only have bodies. Let's see if it's noticeable. Oh, for sure. But you know what? I'm going to do some tests with a timer and figure out exactly what percentage it's increased my speed by. I did three time trials with and without the Zephyr charm, averaged them, and then did some math, and uh, it's about 27% speed increase with the Zephyr. Very, very good. Spirit of the Deep, excerpt from a longer work of fiction. Spirit of the Deep, Siren of the Dreams. I walked for hours along the coast, leaving Dunwall behind me until the lament of the waves drowned all other feeling. I wept, knowing you would not come to me, my love. You rule my dreams, where I behold with senses I do not possess in waking life the dark splendor of your home in the deep. There the ocean rests on your back like a sleeping child on his father's shoulders. In these sleepless nights of despair, you appear to me not as the mighty Leviathan, but as a young man with eyes as black as the void. The Outsider. Oh, I can't get up there. Yeah, there's all these rooftop places that you can go, but none of them actually lead into the house proper. I think we either have to go through the front door or something with the grave switch. I love that those plants on the ground are obviously like spelling out runes or, or something, some sort of magic. Graveyard is just crawling with people and entities. But I am curious, like, what's in the grave? Does that just lead into the house? Maybe that's the secret way into the house. I want to go there. All right, let's do this. That never gets old. 
I don't know why I jumped guaranteeing that I would get fall damage. I could just go through the front door. But I don't want to. I think that might be all the witches here in the front yard. I think it might just be dogs now. Oh no, there's still you. I see. I don't care. Hold on, there's a witch down there. I guess that's where the grave switch thing is going to lead to. Repair the grave switch. Uh, let's wait a second. saved a single time. Can I not read the note first? No. Now I can read about the lever whereabouts now that I've found the lever and repaired it. With the doubt on his way, Delilah had me disable the grave switch and put it in the garden shed. 